Hello and welcome to another episode of Bare Bones Wargaming, a show with no bells, no whistles, no frills, just a man, a camera, and his game. On this episode, taking a last look at the late unpleasantness, which is two campaigns to take Richmond, both the Peninsular Campaign in 1862, the Seven Days Battle, the culmination of that, and of course if it takes all summer, which I did my playthrough of here recently. And since I said last video, you know what time that is. Time to take a look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. So it's review time here. Opinion time, as it says. BBW opinion time. Alright. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dealing with my allergies again. Because, of course, pollen is in high gear, especially here in the south. It's just everywhere. It is ubiquitous. One of my favorite words of all time. So let's talk about the late unpleasantness. Um, first of all, let me just... For those of you who watched my two videos, um, as you can see, this game's almost over. Um, as you can see, the Union is closing in. Um, the Confederacy never really recovered from that devastating hit at Yule. Um, they just, yeah, it was like it was like playing uh, heads-up poker and, and having the other person, you know, take half your stack on the first hand. It just, there just was no good way to recover. And then, you know, some of the other die rolls didn't go so well either. So, and they haven't been able to get a lot of replacement cards. That's been a problem too. But, you know. That's part of the nature of the beast, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Whoops. Sorry about that. Let's go backwards. Okay. Let's take a look here now. So to start with the good. This is a nice, easy, light, operational Civil War game. Uh, there's not a whole lot of rules here. Uh, the rules for each game, I want to say, are about six, seven pages long. Um, there's not really... Yeah, there's not really a whole lot here. I'm just kind of looking here at the rule book. And yeah, so like if it takes all summer, there's about six pages of rules. That's it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, nothing fancy, nothing over complicated here. Um, it is a very easy game to pick up. So that's cool. It's a very easy game to play through too. Um, I definitely think this is a game you could play in an evening without too much trouble. Okay. It does give you lots of choices too. Uh, with the cards that you can use here. Again, this is not a CDG, it's not a card-driven game, but the cards are basically used to structure things. Um, and that kind of also goes with another good point. So I want to combine these two together is, I really like how the cards here create a framework for play, but they don't dictate play. You know, uh, the designer said in his notes that there's nothing, you know, he dislikes more in a game than like, you know, a rule that says, you know what, you can't do this, you will be limited to this. Well, okay, you know what? <laughs> That's like tying one hand behind your back. And, and, and I agree, if you have to come up with a bunch of rules like that, it may not be the best system to do, or maybe not the best situation to game. You know, there's several situations like that in the American Civil War that are extremely difficult to game. The Chancellorsville with the flank march that Jackson did. And Tito, you know, a player will coordinate his assaults pretty well. McClellan didn't do that. Um, Second Bull Run comes to mind, too, with a lot of that chaos and confusion that went on there. So what the cards do here is they allow you to create that framework without dictating things. Because you don't know when the cards are going to come out. You don't know if your opponent has those cards. And since you only get two per turn after getting an initial hand of eight, you know, if you burn through a lot of your cards early, then, you know, you may find yourself up on sanitary waters without proper means of propelling yourself forward. You know, it, it may get kind of dicey. It may get a little sporty. So, I like that. I like how the cards work in this game. Okay? And that goes along with the choices. You know, I've played this game now, this particular one, that takes all summer about four times. And I've had it play out a little bit different each time. Including this last one, where I had never had the Union Army march to the west and basically try to engage the Confederates, but because the Confederates played the Grant Demands attacks, I didn't want to give up a full turn of movement and combat for the Union and let the you know South get down and pick their terrain and, and line up their forces and stuff to maybe lay a trap. 
a la the North Anna River kind of thing, um, I went ahead and did it. I altered my strategy. So there are lots of choices here uh, that you have in terms of what happens, uh, how things unfold. You know, even the uncertainty with the wilderness and um, the the Tatapotamoy uh, um, Swamp. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I may not be. I mean, I'm not a native of Richmond. My boys are, of course, but I'm not. Um, so I may be mispronouncing that. But I do like those two things a lot. I also like the combat system. You know, the fact that combat is not necessarily, you know, one round and you get to choose. You know, extracting Civil War armies necessarily was not an easy task to do. Uh, trying to separate them, slow people down, things of that nature. Uh, disengage, only have, you know, one part of the line engaged. or trying to get all the line engaging. Uh, so I do like the fact that there is that die roll. And it can be, you know, an uncertain thing, too, where... Um, you know, I was just reading, been reading um, Lincoln's Lieutenants by Sears and talking about, you know, how there was a brigade commander at Chancellorsville who, you know, took over after the CO was killed. And he just started marching his guys to the rear because he decided they needed rest and ammunition and stuff and left a big hole in the line. I mean, you know, that's the same thing as rolling the attack ends to me on this chart because, you know, you don't have control of everything all the time. Coordination does not work out so well. You know, couriers get lost, telegraph lines don't work, or messages get mislaid for some reason. Um, so there's a lot of uncertainty, and I like that, you know, with the combat results table, there is a lot of that. You have to roll a die to find out, will the combat continue? Will it be done? You can still try to disengage, but it is a risky proposition, and I like that too. Because if you do manage to disengage, it, it should be tricky. It should not be an easy thing that was done. Some of these battles had a momentum of their own. You know, like a battle within a battle kind of thing. Right? Um, other thing I like is it's easy to reset this game too. Since you're dealing with strength points here, you're dealing with divisions. and It's, it's very quick. You know, the cards very easily you know, reorganize, reshuffle and everything and stuff. So, you know, if things don't go so well the first turn or so and you get a bad combo of cards and you get pounded if, you know... You're like, shoot, you know what, I, you know, this, this, I think we all know where this is headed. Then you can quickly reset this thing. It takes just a matter of minutes to reset either one of the games. Um, and of course, most of my comments here, generally speaking, are about, you know, both of the games because they both use the same system. Uh, let's see. It gives you the feel, too, of the Overland campaign without getting into a lot of detail. And I've kind of reached that point, I guess you could say, in my gaming life where I enjoy having one game about a topic that I really like that's fairly simple and one that's fairly complex. Uh, a good example is this game. You know, if I want to play something that gives me the feel without giving me a whole lot of details, uh, you know, a whole lot of rules, then, you know, I'll play this. If I want something more detailed on the Overland campaign, then Grant takes command, part of the great um, campaigns the American Civil War series. That is the game that I would go to if I want to do a more detailed look at things, uh, a little more um, in depth, a little more meat, so to speak. Okay. Now again, you know, both have their merits, but you know, I, I do like how you get the feel without getting all of the um, necessarily all all the the details uh, in, in the process or, or getting too many rules too um, cumbersome in some ways. Because, you know, sometimes detailed games can feel a little more cumbersome. Some people love all those details. Depends on who you are. And the other thing I think is good about this game is the leader casualties. Um, you know, there were a number of leaders that got killed uh, during the course of the war, different battles um, and such. And, you know, it did have an impact on things. You know, it is interesting to think of some of these folks. You know, like um, Jesse Reno comes to mind, um, who was killed at um, South Mountain. You know, he was a very promising corps commander, or, or, or very promising commander for, uh, I guess he did end up a corps commander, if I remember correctly, but he was a very promising commander for the Union Army. But, you know, things didn't work out so well, so to speak. And I guess that's an understatement when I think about it, phrasing it that way. But my point being is that, you know, that uncertainty that's out there uh, is involved here with the leader casualties. Now, granted, I will say that, you know, I do find it a little steep in the if it takes all summer to have it both a one and a two because that's a pretty high number and if you get some bad die rolls you're gonna have people dying left and right so to speak and that's really gonna color the outlook of the game but then again you know that can also be a good thing because it gives you 
a different situation to look at. Uh, for example, the game I have right now, um, this last turn here, whatever turn that was, turn six, I think. Um, yeah, May 14, 15, Lee got killed in his attempt to try and stem the, the Union tide towards Richmond. And Yule got killed earlier. AP Hill bit the dust. So, you know, it does alter things, uh, especially since uh, the leaders have the uh, die roll modifiers for combat. Um, and also, of course, for trying to retreat for com from combat if you if you find yourself in the position that you need to do so. So the leader casualties, it's another layer of uncertainty, another layer of friction, and I, I do think that's a good thing. Now, as far as the bad goes, um, the bad... For me, there's only really one thing, and that is the leader casualties. Because, again, it can make things very swingy. Uh, it can make things very uncertain. Um, it can kind of throw a game off. But, you know, that's also life, too. I mean, you know, look at the situation we're in right now. Things are unpredictable. You just never know, you know, anything can happen, and it often does. Uh, which is another saying that I enjoy, because it's true. You know, life is completely unpredictable. Um, not to get, like, deeply philosophical and stuff, but if you really stop and Think about it for a minute. Just exactly how fragile the human body is. You know, it, it, it is amazing, you know, how, how truly, how thin our skin is, you know, as far as injuries and things and stuff go. It, it's, you know, it's the kind of thing that if you think about it too much, you probably could, you know, give you a little bit of a, um, oh, I don't know, it cause you maybe some concern. Let's put it that way, if you, if you thought about it too long. Uh, but... It's that kind of thing. Um, you know, it, there is that uncertainty. But again, you know, if you don't like your games too swingy, then I could easily see that being a bad thing. And I did have one game where it was extremely frustrating. Uh, of it, if it takes all summer, where you know, there was one battle going on, I didn't want to risk the Union withdrawing, and Grant got killed, and I was like, well, shoot, now Meade's in charge, which is, you know, not he's no Grant, but I mean, Meade obviously did a good job, and it was like, okay, well, let's continue to press here because I don't want to try to retreat because you lose the die roll modifier. And then he got killed. And by the rules, the game's over. That's it. Stick a fork in it. It was done. Like on the first flipping turn. So that's the reason I mentioned that, the, you know, it really is truly the, the leader casualties in this game really are a double-edged sword. Without a doubt. The only thing I can say, um, or the other bad thing I guess I should say, let me finish bad here because there's two bad things here. Uh, some of the rules are not quite detailed enough in the rule book. There's a few things that um, I, I've had questions about. I posted some questions on Board Game Geek, and I haven't gotten any responses for the most part, especially not from um, the, the typical areas you expect to see support, which the designer, of course, has passed away, um, which obviously, you know, there's nothing can be done about that, so to speak. But, um, you yeah, know... The company, though, too, you know, Compass, you know, no one, I don't know if anybody watches BGG that much or whatever, but um, my point being that I've had the questions posted for, I think, three weeks now, and I haven't gotten a response except from a fellow gamer who's, you know, basically trying to make his best guess, you know, like I am, uh, at the rules. So some of them are still unanswered, you know, certain things like, um, like the Gates of Richmond, you know, if you occupy Richmond with a Union unit, the game, you know, ends well is that a cavalry or infantry now granted it is specific and it takes all summer that it must be an infantry but it's not in gates of richmond so you know there's that kind of thing uh there's also you know other things like there's cards that if you play it then you know you end up rolling a die and if one through three the ducks shuffled again well it doesn't specifically say if played it just has that at the bottom. So does that count for discards too? I mean, my natural inclination is to say probably not. But, you know, I, I would rather have a, a definitive answer myself for things like that. So so some little things um, like that, that, you know, the, the rules could have been a little tighter, a little more specific. Um, you know, the rule book reminds me of one of those rule books where... And one of those things where, you know, like when you teach somebody something else, you you kind of, you don't realize that you're making some assumptions because you know the material so well, so to speak. So yeah, that's the way it felt in parts, you know, but not all of it. All of, overall, I found the rule book to be, to be good. I understood um, 
you know, what was going on. I didn't have a whole lot of questions. I did have a handful. Um, but nothing, you know, like a whole rule like, oh, you know, what about this thing with this whole section of the supply rules or something. I didn't have anything like that at all. So The only ugly thing I will say about this game is, and this is more of a production issue, is on the strength point charts um, for the two sides. If you don't want to use the strength point markers, which for me, the less clutter on the map board, the better. Because that's, I just, you know, I would much rather prefer... To do that as I did with my playthrough but the if it takes all summer tracks I uh, have some problems uh, the Confederacy has several uh, um, tracks where it goes higher than the actual strength of the counter so you have to make sure that you adjust for that the Union has an entire core almost uh, the fifth core that actually has well, I should say half. Half the core is not the right guys. It's actually second core repeated for whatever reason. So, now granted, I mean, you can just, you know, because each one, there's like first division, second division, etc. And you can just line it up that way. But, you know, it's the kind of thing that... It's the kind of thing that, that, that makes you cringe, I guess, maybe is a good way of putting it. I know as war gamers, we usually are are willing to put up with a rata and sometimes I think that's because you know with the concept of friction you know you know there's going to be problems you know there's going to be issues it's just a question of you know how much how much can you control things how many things did you overlook you know how many things popped up that you you know didn't even consider as a possibility um, but it, it, it could have been a little a little better as far as, as that goes that was um that was a disappointment, I will say that, um, for especially as much effort went into this game, because it is a very nice game. Um, and I will say that um, part of the game, with the dummy units and stuff, there is an extra enhancement, which of course you wouldn't have in solo play. So there is that to consider, too, if you're thinking about buying this game, um, is that extra fog of war that you get, not only from the cards... But also, you know, from the dummy units that you can place on the map and, and move them around like, you know, real units and stuff. And, and that kind of bluffing, um, if you will. That kind of cat and mouse, you know, checking things out, wondering what's going on. So, so overall, um, I, do, I do give the game a thumbs up because I do like it a lot. Uh, I like it so much, the system I like so much, that I've actually started working on my other table here in the... Uh, the man cave on the other end of the room, I've started working on beginning a map that can be used to do the 1862 and 63 campaigns um, using the basically the rule system for this. So the similar, you know, same supply, combat, all that. Um, I'm just designing a, a map. And of course I'll have to figure out the counters, the strength, as well as the die roll modifiers. And then, of course, the cards, which I have a, a list put together. I haven't figured out exactly how many of each other than, you know, obviously like a card like the Emancipation Proclamation. There's only going to be one of them in the deck for obvious reasons. Um, but I'm going to try to put together a scenario for 1862 and 1863 because given Lee's original intention in the 1862 campaign, which basically was, you know, going to Maryland, stir things up there, and then try to force uh, McClellan to fight him up in um, in the Cumberland Valley, which is basically where he went in 1863. The Cumberland Valley is, you know, Carlisle and all that area there. Um, Harrisburg, Carlisle, um, Chambersburg, those kind of places that you're familiar with with the 1863 campaign. Uh, but, of course, didn't get that far because of Special Order Number 191. Because at least there was the one good thing that Special Order one num number 191 did was kind of put Lee back on his heels. And uh, it's interesting because Lee was looking to fight an offensive battle in that campaign. And he kind of ended up like Napoleon did at the Battle of the Nations. You know, looking to fight an offensive battle, but ended up on uh, terrain and ground that really was more for a defensive battle. Um, especially making a stand there at, at Sharpsburg um, along the Antietam Creek. So, so anyway, I mean, I guess you could say that's, you know, one of the best compliments I guess you can give a game and a designer if you're like, this system's really cool, 
hey, let's try to apply it to, you know, this situation, this campaign. Uh, so I'm working on that. I, I don't know where that'll go. If I can get something put together that's feasible, um, you know, I'll probably go ahead and contact Compass Games and be like, hey, really enjoy the late unpleasantness. I've done this. Are you guys interested? And if not, of course, then I'll just have it for myself and I'll enjoy it. So anyway, so that's my evaluation of the late unpleasantness. If you're looking for a light operational Civil War game, uh, I think this is a good system. I have enjoyed all my plays that I've had, and each one has been different um, and unique. All right, so that being said, as I spend part of my gaming time working on this design, uh, and the other half doing games, once I'm done with this game, which again, as you can see from the situation here, it'll be pretty quick. Um, this is, shouldn't take too much longer to, to finish off. I'm going to start tinkering around with um, not war, but murder. In anticipation of doing a, a video for that here in a few weeks around the time whenever the uh, Cold Harbor was actually fought, which was the beginning of, of June, June 3rd, 4th, I believe, if my memory serves me. So, okay, so again, I give this a thumbs up. It's been a very enjoyable game. I'm glad I, I got it, and I'm, I'm even happier I got it. When Compass Games was running their sale here recently, last month in April, um, when they were doing their 30-40% off, this one was 40% off actually, um, so I'm glad I picked it up. Alright, so on that happy note, we'll continue working with Civil War here. I might take a slight detour, I'm not 100% sure yet, I'll be honest, because um, I, I did notice today I, I um, the new Verdun game. Um, coming out from Europe has started shipping and I did do that on Kickstarter so I might take a little break from the Civil War and take a look at that um, to see what that's like because there's not a whole lot about World War One that interests me but that battle actually does I I do find that one um, I read uh, Alistair Horn's The Price of Glory years ago about the Verdun um, the whole battle of Verdun and stuff and it was very interesting to me so I'm looking forward to, to taking a look at that and might you know, take a little pit stop, you know, like being on the interstate, you know, pull over at the rest stop for a little bit and, you know, check that out and then jump back on the Civil War Highway, if you will. Um, uh, as I do have a number of games that I still need to investigate and, you know, some old friends to go back to. I've dug out for the people, which I've had for a long time and I have not played in a long time. Um, digging that out and looking at the rule book again as well. So, so this is Tim Korshner from Bare Bones Wargaming saying thanks for watching and we'll see you next time eventually if not, nothing else definitely we'll we'll see you for um, for a playthrough of not uh, not war but murder for sure as always thanks for watching